Well, hello guys, Mr. G here, and we're going to do uh, the second lesson for pulses and weight. Okay, this is um, for grade 10 and it's lesson 2. So, now we're going to be talking about superposition of pulses. Last time we learned about the pulse, about the medium, what is a pulse, different type of pulses, and a medium. Now, we're going to be talking about something else called superposition of pulse. Now, what happens? Sometimes pulses can meet, or more than one pulse may move through the same medium and then it may happen that those pulses meet at some time now they when they meet something happened called superposition okay so what is the principle of superposition staying now principle of superposition say when two disturbances say pulses or say waves occupy the same space at the same time the resulting disturbance is the sum of the two disturbances this is what we call the principle of superposition. Now, what is happen after they met, each of them continues moving in the previous direction. Okay, now, superposition have two types. We have two types of superposition. Now, superposition can be divided into, it can be constructive interference, or it can be destructive interference. Those are the two types of superposition that they are. Okay, so superposition, which is the place or is when two disturbances occupy at the same space at the same time, it results the sum of the two disturbances, but we have two types of superposition. It can be constructive interference, still superposition, or it can be destructive interference. And now let's quickly look at the difference between the two of them. So what is a constructive interference then? Is when, when two pulses now say pulses or a disturbance eh? it's not only for pulses meet resulting in a bigger pulse so the main thing here is that the resulting pulse the resulting pulse is going to be a bigger pulse now we're speaking about pulses but this is happening with also waves so it's not just only a pulse any disturbance if it's going to be a constructive interference if they meet at the same time at the same time and the resulting one is bigger than the two together okay so let's see this one um in a picture quickly for example let's say we have two pulses a and b that they moving towards each other on a rope or in any medium in this case is going to be a rope sometime Sometime later, it's going to happen that those pulses are going to meet some, somewhere there. So they meet in, depending on the speed, which one is moving faster and so on. But those pulses are going to meet some point there eventually. Now, what is going to happen? There is going to be superposition. In this case, there is going to be interference. So, the resultant pulse is going to be bigger than the two pulses. So... At some time, this is what is going to happen. This pulse here is a new pulse, which is the addition of A and B. And that is why it is bigger than both of them. Now, eventually, they're going to pass each other. Remember, they're passing each other. And they're going to continue moving in the same way as they were moving before they met. And so this is what is going to happen. Each pulse will continue moving in the direction as they were moving before. So this is what we call constructive interference. Now, what is destructive interference? Well, by logic thinking, destructive, the word destructive is when is when two pulses meet resulting in a smaller pulse C 
same as we said before. I'm speaking about pulses, but it could be any disturbance, okay? Resulting in a smaller pulse. So, let's see one example as we did before. Let's assume we're having two pulses on rope, or in rope moving towards each other. Now, same as before, we're having two pulses, A and B, and they're moving towards each other. So, what is going to happen is that eventually they are going to meet somewhere there in between. They're going to meet. And then what is going to happen is because one of the pulses is on top of the medium and the other one is at the bottom, the bottom ones by convention are going to be negative pulses, then the resultant pulse here somewhere is going to be smaller than the, uh, than the two pulses, okay? So this is what we call destructive interference. So let's see what is going to happen eventually after some time. So at that point, we are going to have a smaller pulse because it will be pulse A minus pulse B. So that is actually what is happening now. What is happening after? Each pulse continues moving in the way that they were moving before. So each pulse will continue moving in the same direction as they were doing before. What is actually happening in the middle when they meet each other, which is actually the interference, what is happening, they just crossing each other at that specific time and that is why they uh, result in either a smaller pulse or bigger pulse and then why is that they continue moving later on this one let's look at one example a very small one and then we are going to finish with this first lesson okay so we are going to be doing this example two pulses are traveling on a rope they right they're traveling on the rope and the two pulses um, our A has an amplitude of 1 cm and pulse B has an amplitude of 2 cm. Each pulse is traveling at 1 meter per second. Sketch and label the two pulses traveling down the rope before they meet. Sketch and label the two pulses at the point where they meet. Sketch and label the two pulses at the, after they have passed each other. What is the resultant amplitude of the two pulses? and give the name of this phenomenon and how far will the pulse A travel in 10 seconds, okay? So let's quickly have the sketch. We have to sketch before they met, when they met, and after they met, okay? And then pulse A is, um, is a one centimeter and pulse B is a two centimeter. So let's answer this question real fast. All right, the answer for 1.1 is this one. You have pulse A that is moving towards pulse B and pulse B is moving towards pulse A, okay? So what is going to happen eventually? That is question, question 1.2. The pulses are going to meet at some point. And at that point, you will have a greater pulse. In this case, will be the addition of A plus B. That is the pulse there. And we can sum our answer quickly what is the resultant amplitude of the two pulses already so we have that this one was one centimeter of amplitude remember the amplitude is the distance from the maximum height and this one have the amplitude of it was um, two centimeters now this one here will be one centimeter plus two centimeters so the amplitude here is going to be equal to three centimeters. Remember again, the amplitude, and that was done in the previous lesson, eh? go there and watch it. The amplitude is the maximum displacement from rest position to the top there where the uh, um, pulse disturbs. So this here is the amplitude. But it was done in the previous video. Please, you can go there and watch it, all right? So now what happened after they met? Well, guys, after they met, each pulse continue moving in the same way as they were moving before. So this is quite easy. What is the result? We already answered that one. Give the name of this phenomenon. Now, for the name of the phenomenon, they don't specify. So you can either say superposition of pulses or you can say constructive interference. So let's answer on this side. This is point five. So you can either say superposition of pulses or you can say constructive interference because they do not specify. If they ask you what type of superposition, then you have to say constructive. You cannot say um, superposition because it's in the question. And the last one is not difficult. You don't even have to do calculation. How far 
will pulse A travels in 10 seconds. Now, let's go back to the question real fast here. One meters per second here, one meter per second means that these pulses, each of them are moving at the same speed. These pulses cover one meter every one second. So if they ask you how many meters, how many meters will cover in 10 seconds, well, it will be 10 meters. This is quite easy. You don't have to do calculations. Later on, we're going to learn about some calculation, but you don't have right now to do calculations. Okay, if one meter, if in one second it travels one meter, then in 10 seconds will travel 10 meters. And that is the answer. You don't have to do more things in there. So uh, thank you for watching, guys. This is now the whole uh, lesson uh, two, which is re uh, related to interference and superposition. This is a small summary of all of them, of uh, the cases when they, you get a constructive interference and the case when you get a destructive interference. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, Mr. G here. I'll see you next time.